Good morning, everyone. A few weeks ago, our country elected a new president. Some liked the outcome, some didn't. But for many of us, I think the feeling is the same. Thank God the election's over. Now, not that I want to bring politics into mass today, but I heard a humorous conversation that unfolded among our presidential candidates, and I want to share it with you today. Donald Trump said, hey, Hillary, this is big. I had a dream last night that God anointed me President of the United States of America. And Hillary replied, oh, well, Donald, but I too had a dream that God anointed me the President of the United States of America. And not only that, he anointed me Queen of Outer Space. <laughs> and then President Obama chimed in and he says, you know what, guys, you guys are all wrong. Because in my dream, I don't remember anointing any of you. <laughs> it's only a joke. <laughs> only a joke, everybody. <laughs> my friends, I don't worry about who the president is. Because no matter who is president, no matter who is king, no matter who, what government there is or who's in authority, all of them, kings and queens, presidents and parliaments, they will rise and they'll fall. And when it's all said and done, everybody, there will be only one king, one anointed sovereign, and his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is king. Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our Lord and Savior who we worship, he alone is king and he will reign forever. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Very good. Now I want to start my homily today with asking you a question. Have you ever been in one of those situations where you s see someone that you know and then they don't know you? I'm like, hey Mary, it's Jane. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I had a situation like that a couple weeks ago. I went out and about in town, and I saw that somebody had the Holy Spirit medal, the thing that we gave at the beginning of Mass. And I said, wow, you know Holy Spirit? And the lady continued, oh, yes, I know Holy Spirit. I like that church. They have a great priest over there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> and she goes, oh, yeah, this priest, he's wonderful. He's very young. He gives uh, good talks. He's very funny. I'm like, no kidding. And she's like, and his name is Father Matt. <laughs> you know, I said, goodbye. <laughs> It's a funny story, but in all seriousness, though, I think being forgotten is something we all fear. We don't want to ever be forgotten. Deacon Rigo once said to me, he said, you know what's worse than a bodily death? What's worse than a bodily death is being forgotten to the whole world. But you see, everybody, even though people may forget us, Jesus Christ, our King, never forgets us. And that's the message that I hope that we take home this Christ the King Sunday. Jesus never forgets you. He never does. And he assures you today, he said to the, the good thief, today you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that beautiful? The parting words of our dying Lord was simply, I'll never forget you. I'll remember you. If you ask me, I think that's very nice. I have the opportunity to give spiritual direction to this very wise man. I'm very always humbled that he would come to see me for a spiritual conversation, but he shared with me a story that I'd like to recount to you today. This very wise man. He was about 10 years old, and he got into a fight with his parents. And he threw a tantrum, and he packed his bags. He threw some toys and clothes, and he said, I'm running away from home. Well, interestingly, they let him go. And since he was only 10, they figured, well, he was going to come back soon. 
Well, so he marched out the door and went to the neighbor's house. He rang the doorbell and the neighbor saw him. He says, can I move in with you? I'm running away from home. And the neighbor said, go home, go back to your parents. <laughs> then he went to the next house. He said, I'm running away from home. Let me move in with you. And they said, no, go home. They went to the next one and so on and so forth. Well, it turned out that his mom was calling ahead to all the neighbors. <laughs> Finally, he had nowhere else to go, so he sat down on the swing at the park, at the playground, and, he, and his father came. His father had been following him all along, and he said, Son, enough of, enough of this. It's time to go home. And the little boy, now a grown man, had said something very interesting. He said, What I remember the most was the safety of being carried home by my dad that nice? What you remember the most was being carried home by his dad. You see, everyone, that's what Jesus does. That's what our king does. Our king, Jesus Christ, he wants to find you and love you and save you and bring you home. I know we have many visitors here today, and you, many of you, some of you were invited by your friends here. If there's anything that you could take home, take home this, that Jesus never forgets you. Never. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what sin you committed, Jesus will always remember you. Amen? Amen. And that's easy to forget. If you ever doubt that, if you ever feel, when we feel like that at times, we feel like that God had abandoned us or that he's far away, let me teach you a very simple prayer to pray. You ready for it? Jesus. 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 Just whisper his name over and over again, Jesus. Because the name of Jesus means God saves. But according to a very holy priest, the name of Jesus also means God remembers. God remembers. Now, it's not enough for that God remembers us. We also got to remember him. We got to remember our king. And I want to conclude my homily now by reading to you an essay. It came out many, many years ago. It's quite famous. I found it on YouTube being recited by Bing Crosby. By the way, Bing Crosby made a great priest if you've ever seen the Bells of St. Mary's. Anyways, now listen very carefully to the words of the essay I'm about to read. It's about our king. He was born in an obscure village, the child of some very ordinary people. He lived in a small town in a carpenter shop until he was 30 years old. Then for three years, he was a wandering preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or even owned a home. He was homeless. He didn't go to college. And he never did any of the things that you and I associate with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. When he was only 33 years old, everyone turned against him. His best friends, they all ran away. And he was turned over to his enemies, and he went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. And when he was dying, his executioners gambled for the only possession that he had on earth, his coat. And when he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Now, 20 centuries have come and gone, and today he's still the central figure of the human race, the leader of humanity's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments and congress that ever reigned, all the presidents and all the princes that ever sat, all of them put together, 
have not affected our life here on earth as much as that one solitary life. There, everybody, is our king. And our king did something that no human king, no human president can ever do. Our king gave it his all for us and for our salvation. May this King, Jesus Christ, be praised, adored, and loved today and forever. Amen. Amen.